Good evening, Info Warriors. I'm John Bown, and this is what's on tonight, this Friday, March 30th, 2012 edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight on InfoWars Nightly News, the U.S. Army reprimands soldier for supporting Ron Paul. Reserve Corporal Jesse Thorson says their punishment was, quote, absolutely worth it. Are thousands of other active duty military people going to be punished for simply voicing their First Amendment rights? Then we focus on global governance and how the United Nations is involved in public subversion of the U.S. Constitution. John Bowne will detail the criminality of the U.N. and the Agenda 21 takeover of our lives. Up next, we'll look at the secrets behind Ridley Scott's new film, Prometheus. Then we'll look at the birth of modern social engineering in the 20th century and the manufacturing of consent. Darren McBreen reports on the father of propaganda Propaganda, Edward Bernays, and finally, John Bound interviews Rosa Corey, author of Behind the Green Mask, as InfoWars moves to expose one of the greatest threats to our sovereignty, Agenda 21. Strap yourselves in. You found it. The front lines of the InfoWar. Get ready for this Friday, March 30th, 2012 transmission. We take you now to the InfoWars.com studios in Austin, Texas. All that and more, but first tonight, yes, that majestic heroine is at it again. The UK queen has been accused of drug trafficking, according to Press TV. Britain's financial regulator has fined the British queen's bank for money laundering failures, as a French presidential candidate has said part of the queen's fortune comes from drug trafficking. On, 21st, on the 21st of March, Jacques Cheminade, an independent presidential candidate running in the French election, said a part of the fortune of the Queen of England comes from dr drug trafficking. And many of you may know that the Queen is the largest land landowner on the face of the earth. She actually owns 6,600 million acres of land. Uh, this makes her the richest individual on earth. However, there's no way to easily value her real estate. There's no current market in the land of entire countries. So Scarface, Queen Scarface is at it again. And of course, what was it? The end of last year, we had the report of a dead body on her land. And we've been speaking to folks in Canada about the missing children that disappeared with the Queen and the Prince one nice summer day. Moving on, the United States is now number one in highest corporate taxes. No, it's not an April Fool's joke. When Japan officially slashes its rate to 36.8% Sunday, America will be tops at 39.2%. President Obama has proposed a rate of 28%, but Republicans charge that it comes from $350 billion in new offsetting taxes. And of course, the failure of the Obama administration knows no bounds. It's just a pleasure to watch. Just kidding. Now moving back to the mysterious booms in Clintonville. A sound was recorded by audio engineer Brian Sullivan the first night no luck, he said, but then Sullivan had some success on Saturday, one minute before 4 a.m. It's short, but it sounds like a boom. Here it is. This is Clinton Felt recording, uh, 3.59, uh, March There it was. This is Clinton felt recording. Uh, this is Clintonville recording. Yeah, I bet you could hear a pin drop in that town. Don't worry. Uh, it's just earthquakes. They're not building a giant facility underground. Uh, but when they don't get that facility built underground, you'll hear the beautiful sound of high-speed rail. Moving on. Army official reprimands soldier who spoke at the Ron Paul rally 
Reserve Corporal Jesse Thorson says punishment absolutely worth it. The uniformed soldier who endorsed Ron Paul during a rally in Iowa in January has been officially reprimanded by the U U.S. Army. After being cut short during a CNN interview on January 3rd, Reserve Corporal Jesse Thorson, who has served two tours in Afghanistan and was due to head back for a third, was invited onto the stage by Paul himself to address Paul's cheering supporters. And it's such a good thing that they keep the mouths of those folks that are out there supporting the Founding Fathers' ideas and the freedom of our country and the last ditch effort to get our country back is completely shut down. Speaking of which, they shut down Ron Paul's rally, his uh, monumental rally, which drew a record number 5,200 people in Wisconsin. The media has completely blacked it out. Guys. Okay. Okay, the Ron Paul rally in Wisconsin that drew 5,200 was, of course, blacked out. And uh, if you bring the document cam over here, we can kind of go through a procession of uh, Ron Paul's horrible treatment by the mainstream media. Uh, you may remember we reported that uh, the only remaining MSN reporter covering Ron Paul was pulled, and that was back in March 14, 2012. And uh, of course, there he is in front of a huge number of good, honest, hardworking, concerned Americans, not conspiracy theorists, but uh, actual people that have brain cells. And here we go, uh, Anderson Cooper uh, responding to Ron Paul's media blackout. And we go back to October 21st, 2011 from the state column. Anderson Cooper responds to Ron Paul's media blackout comments. We've got uh, Patrick C. Dew reporting how the media was purposefully ignoring Ron Paul. Here's an Aaron Dykes article about the uh, Politico's Simon Says, how Ron Paul's victory in the Iowa caucuses may help Romney. Ron Paul doesn't even exist from the Personal Liberty Digest. And uh, Rachel Maddow talking about how Ron Paul's delegate sneak attacks strategy undermine and the voter will. And uh, Sarah Palin warning back in uh, January uh, about the mainstream media ignoring Ron Paul. Well, speaking of propaganda, we have a huge monumental piece of propaganda that will be at a theater near you very shortly. But first, we're going to go to a piece from our own Darren McBreen. It's about uh, Mr. Bernays, Mr. Propaganda. And uh, if you're familiar with fluoride, it was at one point rat poison. And Mr. Bernays made it this shiny element that now goes onto your shiny teeth and into your tap water. Let's roll that piece. To better understand the current state of modern day media manipulation, we must first look at the father of propaganda, Edward Bernays. His influence on the 20th century rivaled that of his uncles, Sigmund Freud, as Bernays pioneered the idea of crowd psychology with Freud's psychoanalytical ideas in what would become a new political ideal on how to control the masses. In his 1928 book, Propaganda, Bernays wrote, If we understand the mechanisms and motives of the group mind, it is now possible to control and regiment the masses according to our will without them knowing it. He called it the engineering of consent and proposed that those, those who, manipulate who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. It was Bernays who introduced the corporate giants to crowd psychology methods and polished techniques to manipulate society. He convinced the population to buy on impulse things they didn't even need by linking mass-produced goods to their own unconscious desires.
The tobacco industry hired Bernays to persuade women to take up smoking, and the Alcoa Aluminum Company asked him to drive the campaign for the national fluoridation of our water supply. A consumerist culture was born, and the U.S. government took notice. In addition to famous corporate giants, Bernays also began working for the federal government. They adopted his technique of manufacturing ever-present dangers and then maintaining a constant state of fear to give those in power greater control of what Bernays called the mass mind. Edward Bernays, who's the father of modern advertising and propaganda, he literally wrote the book, Propaganda. Joseph Goebbels, on record, the Nazi propaganda minister, used a lot of his information and, and, and twisted it to his own designs. Bernays was the chief psychological warfare expert for more than 20 years, advising the Department of War. He, he advised them to call it defense, don't be honest anymore. Call it the Department of Defense, because you're actually gonna run giant imperial slaughter operations. And now we go to this amazing piece by our very own Aaron Dykes about Prometheus, the movie that will premiere June 1st, 2012, directed by Ridley Scott. Many of you may know that Prometheus is a metaphor for Lucifer, the light bearer. The occultist, elitist idea of uh, Lucifer is Prometheus, the man who took the knowledge, well, actually a titan, who took the knowledge from the gods and was punished for it. And, of course, Hermes there on the side of the Rockefeller Plaza, all tying in the hermetic knowledge that the occultist elitists are so into these days. Here we go with that piece. Ridley Scott, arguably one of the greatest living directors, is set to release a prequel to his 1979 mega-hit, Alien. Prometheus, one of the most anticipated sci-fi films in recent memory. Infowars.com research analysis shows Prometheus is not just a film, but a revelation of the method, revealing the deepest secrets of the Illuminati mystery religion. I do have a lot of contacts in the media, as uh, viewers and listeners know. And I have been able to secure a copy of an early script, and it follows very closely from the trailer I've seen and other leaks. And I'm not gonna give the entire film away here, but in synopsis, this is a film about the origins of humankind with a super race of near immortal genetic engineers who are contemplating a genetic overwrite or rewrite of the planet Earth. When meddling humans stumble in to the magician's laboratory, they are punished for their trespass. It was so wrong. The so-called space jockey is the advanced species that have engineered humans back on Earth and produced the bioweapon that we know of as the classical alien that burst out of your chest after feeding on the food in your intestines. The reason we're taking time out to examine Prometheus is because its storyline, its plot, mirrors that of many ancient societies. And the ideas presented in Prometheus are at the core of Western secret societies. These are ancient civilizations that were separated by centuries, and yet this same pictogram was discovered in every one of them. Please tell me you can read that. You think they want us to come and find them? Across the world, we see evidence of early civilizations' obsession with what they believed were off-world influences. From the Nazca lines in South America to the pyramids of Egypt, we see artifacts, testament to early man's obsession with off-world manipulators. Every ancient culture believed they were communicating with men from the sky. Ezekiel with spinning wheels of fire landing and creatures with blue space helmets approaching Ezekiel and giving him a drug to take and then he has wild hallucinations. 
One could say that Prometheus is simply art imitating life and putting a 21st century spin on the beliefs of the Dogon tribe in Africa and the Aztecs of Mesoamerica. Eric von Donegan, more than any other living person, has popularized the idea of chariots of the gods and that our planet has been visited and manipulated by off-world creatures for thousands of years. But the systems that he popularized were regurgitated whole cloth from ideas developed by the ruling class of this planet. And I want to be clear, every major globalist we look at, going back more than 160 years, is completely and totally obsessed with the idea that off-world aliens are controlling this planet and giving them hidden knowledge. By the 1870s, T.H. Huxley Group and their X-Club was dominating the Royal Society in England. The dominant theory within the X-Club was that humans had been seated here, along with most other life forms, by advanced beings from space. From the inception of Darwin's theory on the origin of species, evolutionary scientists never believed for a minute that life simply started on its own. That evolution is not some random, slow system developing by chance, but is actually directed by off-world cedars, terra farmers, creators of worlds. Even the discoverer of DNA Francis Crick promotes the idea that life was seeded on this planet in what he calls directed panspermia. It is part of the larger myth of transhumanism. Huxley, Darwin, Wedgwood, the Galtons, they all interbred in an attempt to create this transcendent Superman. The governing class of this globe believes that they are channeling advanced technological systems given to them by ancient alien species. And the science fiction of the last 150 years, whether it's Jules Verne or H.G. Wells or those that came before them, is obsessed with this and they're on record part of secret societies who believe what they're promoting is actually reality, but knowing that the public is not ready to accept it, they cover it under the guise of fiction. And the film Prometheus is completely constructed around the secret religion of the Illuminati, who believe that they are transcendent and becoming the Superman. We can create cybernetic individuals. We are the gods now. Blurring the lines between fiction and reality, we see a futuristic presentation of the technology conference TED. The keynote speaker is the founder of the Wayland Corporation, Mr. Wayland. There he describes Prometheus stealing fire from the gods. From the Titan Prometheus, our first true piece of technology, fire. The transference of fire, or the first technology to man, is only the beginning of his transgressions. Prometheus is a titan and the creator of mankind who attempts to elevate humans to the level of gods and is punished. The Illuminati believe they have stolen the fire of true genius from the gods. Biotech, nanotech, fusion. As man attempts to become godlike, we release potential forces that can and probably will destroy us. I want to say this in summation. We're not facing off-world genetic engineers that the elite believes created this planet, whether that's true or not. We're facing the global technocrats that are splicing every plant and animal and insect you can imagine together, that are creating chimeras with hundreds of species within them, giving rise to super viruses and bacterial mutations. We are already seeing within three generations in rodents total sterilization and massive deformities in these animals. And we have proven from the Rockefeller Foundation documents and other reports that this is part of a long-term program to wreck the general public's DNA. This is the global elite who have fantasized about off-world genetic engineers creating them actually in a 160 year plus program developing the sciences and technologies to put this into place. Whatever you say about the Illuminati, they have got patience and they have had incredible vision. 
But I believe humanity needs to hear the truth and understand this is being carried out against us all. Because we have a choice to stand up now, but only a short window and say no. I know the plot of the film. I know how it ends, but I'm gonna leave that for you to discover. The point is, the film itself is only a revelation of the method, an externalization of the hierarchy. As you can see, the huge amount of propaganda coming to a theater near you is also aiding the Obama administration in their efforts to subvert the Constitution. Court hears arguments in a lawsuit against Obama's indefinite detention law. Chris Hedges and uh, Noam Chomsky and Daniel Ellsberg, uh, U.S. District Judge Catherine Forrest heard testimony from these folks. And basically they're arguing the fact that they can't even do their jobs anymore without having the possibility of being taken to a unknown facility happen. It's very chilling to be sitting in this seat right now, although I will do anything I can to ensure that my children and my grandchildren still live in a country that has individual liberty. Oh, speaking of individual liberty, hey, there's, just move along. There's no concern over the National Defense Resource Preparedness Executive Order. It's just uh, all that concern you have is just a distraction, according to Asselwyn Subinsang who is an editorial fellow at Mother Jones, he seems to have a problem understanding the Constitution and the national security state, says our very own Kurt Nimmo. He takes the political right to task for warning about the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order signed by Obama earlier this month. This particular executive order is no big deal, and if you really want to place blame, just place it on Harry Truman. Sub Sang writes, he says the, well, Kurt says he's right about Truman. The National Security Act of 1947 was passed by Congress and signed into law by President Truman, and it has allowed the Pentagon and the CIA to encroach on our civil liberties ever since. It created a national security establishment that has issued a number of unconstitutional executive orders. Mr. Sub Sang mentions these in passing. It enabled the military industrial complex president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, warned about in his farewell address in 1961. And speaking of our rights being trampled all over, here's a piece I put together about the UN and this simple logic concerning the Constitution and the war powers of our country and the fact that the executive branch of the government doesn't have the power to make the decision. It all belongs to Congress. Let's go to this piece. The collective consciousness turns once again to the United Nations. Many Americans and especially the soldiers that serve the commander in chief and congressional declarations of war are once again left out in the cold. We were not asked uh, stunningly in direct violation of the War Powers Act, whether or not you believe it's Constitution, it certainly didn't comply with it. We spent our time worrying about the UN, the Arab League, NATO, and too little time, in my opinion, worrying about the elected representatives of the United States. Do you think that you can act without Congress uh, to and initiate a no-fly zone in Syria without congressional approval? You know, again, uh, uh, our, our goal would be to, uh, to seek international permission and uh, we, would, we would come to the Congress uh, and inform you uh, and determine uh, how best to approach this, uh, whether or not we would uh, want to get uh, permission from the Congress. Uh, I think those are issues we would have to discuss as we decide what to do here. Well, I'm almost breathless about that because what I heard you say is we're going to seek international approval and they will come and tell the Congress what we might do, and we might seek congressional approval. If we're working with an international coalition and we're working with NATO, uh, we would uh, want to be able to uh, get uh, appropriate permissions in order to be able to, to do that. That's, that's something that 
you know, all of these countries would want to have some kind of legal basis on which to act. And what legal basis are you looking for? What, what entity? Well, I, obviously, the U, if, if NATO made the decision to go in, that would be one. Uh, if, uh, if, we, if we developed a, an international coalition beyond NATO, uh, then obviously some kind of UN security resolution would so be an, the on, a coalition of. So you're saying NATO would give you a legal basis and uh, um, an ad hoc coalition of nations would provide a legal basis? If we, if we, if we were able to put together a coalition uh, and uh, were able to uh, move together then obviously we would seek whatever legal basis we would need in order to make that uh, uh, justified. I mean, you, you, you know, we, we can't just pull them all together uh, in a uh, combat operation without getting the, uh, the legal basis on which to act. Well, who are you asking for the legal basis from? If it's, uh, obviously if the UN passed a security resolution as it did in Libya, we would do that. Uh, if, uh, if NATO came together as we did in Bosnia, uh, we would rely on that. So, you know, we, we have options here. His response is absolute confirmation that our military and executive branches have been hijacked by the United Nations, which is controlled by the New World Order agenda and promoted by the fiat currency banking cartels. How can the United Nations continue to subvert our sovereign constitutional authority to control the actions of our own United States military. Flashback to the Paris Peace Conference that ended World War I. A League of Nations was formed with a primary mission of maintaining world peace. The American Republican Majority Congress refused to join the League of Nations as Germany and the Axis powers all left the League of Nations and World War II ensued. At the end of the Second World War, the United Nations picked up where the League of Nations failed. The Rockefeller family, one of the primary architects of the Federal Reserve System, donated the 17 acres on the East River of New York City to build the United Nations headquarters. Arranged by Nelson Rockefeller, the deal further solidified the modern presence of the Rockefeller influence in domestic and foreign policy. The United Nations houses 15 specialized agencies outside of New York City. All of the locations of the United Nations outside of the United States enjoy extraterritorial privileges. Thus, the activities of these various entities are sheltered from United States law. As the New World Agenda moves forward and global powers coalesce, the United Nations place the American military on the tip of their spear. The power to declare war was specifically reserved for Congress through the War Powers Clause. The President shall be Commander-in-Chief of the Army and the Navy of the United States and of the militia of several states when called into the actual service of the United States. This power to command the military is specifically balanced by Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the Constitution which vests in Congress the power to declare war. It reads, Congress shall have power to declare war, grant letters of mark and reprisal, and make rules concerning captures on land and water. On the heels of the Korean and Vietnam Wars, primarily in response to the Gulf of Tonkin false flag operation, Congress passed the 1973 War Powers Resolution. The resolution was vetoed by the President. However, Congress overrode the veto with a two-thirds majority vote. The War Powers Resolution requires the President to notify Congress within 48 hours of committing military action and limits the deployment to 60 days with an additional 30 days for withdrawal. Only a declaration of war by Congress can authorize the 91st day of combat, disregarded by every President since the Korean War and in modern times by both President Clinton in Bosnia and again by President Obama in Libya. The executive office seems to have forgotten that American soil must be attacked for the president to attack another country. America must insist the violators of constitutional law remove themselves or be removed from the public arena. Pretty disturbing, huh? Yeah, pretty simple. One plus one equals two. 
Uh, if it rains, you'll get wet. If you drive your car over a cliff, you probably won't make it. That's how simple the entire Constitution is and our rights and the completely fabricated rights that the executive has been taking advantage of in the name of, you guessed it, the United Nations. Now let's move on to this daily quote from an excellent book to uh, inspire you. I recommend reading this every day when you wake up. Just read a little passage there. It's from uh, one of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson from Light and Liberty. The selfish spirit of commerce knows no country and feels no passion or principle but that of gain. Thomas Jefferson from Light and Liberty, Reflections on the Pursuit of Happiness. And if you guys go to a document shot here, I just want to show you that uh, it's, it is very simple. Just move it on along there. And uh, meanwhile, I'll be drawing this. This is uh, right here. This is you. Okay. And all this surrounding you is the liberties. And I'm sure a lot of you are out there going, yeah, thanks, Sherlock. But, uh, these are the liberties we've, we've been given in this amazing experiment we call the United States of America. Well, you've got folks out there whose plan it is to just eat away at your liberties, at your First Amendment, at your, well, they already got, they, they just got rid of uh, your right to protest and uh, Religious freedom is taking a beating. So we're probably, let's see, we're probably, oh, we're getting there. Pretty soon, it's just going to be, it's just going to be you. And, uh, and then all of these liberties, see these liberties here? Those will be gone. The freedom for me, there will probably be some law where the freedom to do this is taken away. In, in, uh, protest, I'm going to do my own protest right now, of the mainstream media blackout. I'm going to take off just for tonight, because my mom said I looked handsome in a tie. I'm going to take off this tie in protest of the mainstream media, because I have individual liberty and the individual freedom of expression to do that. Right now. Unless we do something. Let's go to this interview and we'll kick back and go to this interview with Rosa Corey and her knowledge on Agenda 21. But before we go there, I want to remind everybody to go to Prison Planet TV or tell somebody you know to go to prisonplanet.tv. We are funded by you and your liberty to fund us. That's another liberty they'll take away. Currently, we're here. Currently, we can do this. Currently, you can send money and help make this happen. But it could go away. It could be gone. So let's go to Rosa Corey and talk to her about Agenda 21 and the loss of our individual liberties. I really enjoy it when the globalists try to poison us and, uh, well, we resist them via a free market system. Hello, my fellow info warriors. Alex Jones here introducing you to the ProPure family of gravity-fed filters. Now, you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes, fluoride, lead, mercury, arsenic. And one of the few systems that can efficiently and economically remove or reduce down to non-detectable levels these poisons are gravity-fed filters. And ProPure is the top of the line. Their filters are impregnated with silver, a natural antibiotic. On top of that, they're bigger, so they filter faster. You don't have to prime these the first time you use them. It's amazing. Go to InfoWars.com and click on the shopping cart link uh, to see the entire family of these babies. Now, the fluoride they add to our water is so tiny that most filters can't cut it out. 
But ProPure has their system that will, again, reduce it to non-detectable levels, almost get all of it out of there. That's also available. And if you look at the different systems they offer, the ProPure big brush finish is on a stand, so it's easier on a table or at your restaurant or wherever you have it to go up with a glass or a mug and fill it up. Then there's this big baby right here, the ProPure King large version. Got a lot of different options that come with it. Also, they have the ProPure Big, probably one of the best values out there. And of course, it's burnished stainless steel. And then what I use on my RV, something that's great for your hunting cabin or the back porch is the ProPure Traveler. Small and portable, but packs a huge punch, cleans out all that garbage. They also have a glass sight spigot, so you don't have to take the top off and look in the bottom area to see how much water. You can see how fast it's filtering with this optional uh, system. The globalist obviously are hitting us through our water. It's time to take control of our lives. It's time to not give our children and families these poisons. And these systems cut it down to non-detectable levels across the board. ProPure is the name. I only promote what I believe in. And I use ProPure in my home and my office. And I recommend that you check out the information on ProPure at InfoWars.com. We already have the lowest price at InfoWars.com on the ProPure Gravity Filter System. But when you add in the 10% off when InfoWarriors use the product code WATER at InfoWars.com, nobody can top it. So again, it's a win-win-win. Stop drinking the poison water. Uh, checkmate the globalists when it comes to your health and support InfoWars.com and the work we're doing here. You know, many revolutionaries rob banks and things and kidnap people for funds. We promote in the free market the products we use that are about preparedness. That's how we fund this revolution against the New World Order in our move to restore our constitutional republic and a spirit of 1776 worldwide. Check it out at InfoWars.com. ProPure, top of the line, number one, most powerful and effective and economical gravity-fed water system in the world. ProPure, available, discounted at InfoWars.com. Don't forget product code WATER to save 10%. It's the latest generation, years in development. ProPure is the name. I'm announcing our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in, in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes, and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube. And you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important, but we're looking for people that have that 
magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you going to join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the Info War. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your mettle. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. If you haven't already checked out the InfoWars.com backslash reporter dash contest site, do so and become a reporter here at InfoWars. The cash prizes are $5,000. Uh, we're looking for a male reporter and a female reporter. And in order to speak your mind about topics such as Agenda 21, you can attempt to join us here at InfoWars Nightly News. Now, speaking of Agenda 21, we are joined by Rosa Corey. She is an executive director of the Post Sustainability Institute. The uh, Post Sustainability Institute was established to study the effects of Agenda 21 and uh, communitarianism on liberty. And if that word is new to you, uh, we will get the definition here shortly with this little demonstration with Rosa Corey. Thanks for joining us, Rosa. Great to be with you. Okay, I want to start out, obviously, with the definition of communitarianism. Wow. Well, communitarianism is a social and political philosophy that's behind the United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development. So it's really important to understand that it balances the individual's rights with the rights of the community. And, you know, we were born with our individual rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but the rights of the community are completely undelineated and not defined. They can change at any time and be taken away or granted by your government. So this is really important to understand that communitarianism says that you have to balance the rights of the individual, that selfish individual you, with the rights of the community. And in this case, it could be either your local community or the global community. So when we're thinking about that, we think about um, a great visual for that is uh, two glasses, two clear glasses. And one is a clear glass of water and that is your constitutional republic. Those are your individual rights. In the other class, you've got milk, and that is a, a um, communitarian state, which would be like communist Russia or China or Nazi Germany. Those are communitarian states. So you wanna balance those. So you're gonna take a clear glass pitcher, put it in between them on the table, and take those two glasses and balance them. You're balancing the individual's rights with the rights of the community. What happens to that water? Got milk? That's it, what it, happens. What we have is water milk. 
Yeah, you've got milk, really, because you have lost your individual's rights. Individual rights, they are subsumed into and subordinate to the rights of the community. And now you have lost your rights. The individual is considered to be a threat to the global community. Well, that certainly doesn't taste like freedom to me. <laughs> That's but right. I'm only yeah. assuming because I'm not going to taste that. Uh, okay. I've had enough watered down milk from local grocery store. Uh, let's also uh, get into how the property scam works, how the property taxes work on uh, regional uh, regionalization and uh, sustainable development. Great. Well, I do go into this a lot in my book and um, the way that this, you know, obviously when you're looking at Agenda 21, sustainable development, it has to be funded. And it is, this is a global plan, but it is implemented locally in your town, in your county, in your state, in your country, wherever you live in the, in the world. So they use your, either your property tax dollars, your transportation tax, your tra transportation tax dollars, or your income tax dollars, whatever they've got. They give government grants to your community, to your town, or with redevelopment, they have rezoned huge areas of your town to the preferred development model for Agenda 21, which is smart growth, high density development, stack and pack, ground floor retail with several stories of uh, residential above, doesn't pencil out, it doesn't make money because nobody really wants it in these little towns and communities. So it has to get subsidized with your tax dollars and your government uses redevelopment, which is a way to take your property tax dollars and instead of using them for what you think they should be used for, like uh, your parks, your schools, your roads, your hospitals, your police and fire, that money goes to a redevelopment agency that gives it to private developers to develop. What? Yes, it does. That's where your money's going. That's one reason why so many towns and cities are bankrupt now, because the money was diverted. It was supposed to be used for your services. And then you that, get blighted property. And then how does blight, how, how do they work the blighted property into the scam? Well, this is how they do it. Because these areas, it might be a huge portion of your city. Some cities up to 80 or 90% of the entire city is declared to be blighted. It's identified as being an area that no one would invest in unless property tax dollars were given to those people as an incentive. And that's how they get away with it, see? They take for 30 years, they take your property tax dollars, they indebt themselves to bond brokers, and that's where it's at. The bond brokers take your tax money, they have indebted your city, so your city's going to sink under this huge burden of debt unless people build these huge developments, and then it generates supposedly more tax dollars. But now there is no, des no desire for it, no um, demand for it, and that's why your money is getting pounded down that drain to develop all that bankrupt retail and uh, many stories of residential that's sitting there vacant now in the middle of most cities in the entire U.S. And of course we have to go down and speak out at our city council, but you get into detail in the book about the Delphi technique. That's and, uh, right. and how it's used. Uh, could you speak about that a little bit? Absolutely, because you know what? Hey, you didn't just wake up and find out that you live in a, in a dictatorship. Your government does not want you to be aware of what's going on. I know this is not news to you. So uh, what they do, what, what your government has done, is uh, hired consultants that are experts in this technique, which was developed by the Rand Corporation in the 1960s. It's called the Delphi Technique. And it's used to bring groups of people to what gives them the illusion that they have input and that they're being listened to. But it brings them to a predetermined outcome that was going to be uh, decided that way no matter what they said. So this is when you get invited to a visioning meeting or a workshop or a charrette and you're invited to this meeting. You go on down there. You think you're really having some input, but really you're not. And this is designed to direct large groups of people to a predetermined outcome so that you think you're influencing your government. 
And so when your tax dollars are being used, when your uh, zoning in your town is being changed for to um, develop this desired uh, building style for the new world order, which is smart growth, you think you have an input on that, but really you don't. You're being told it's your plan, but in fact, it is not. And yes, it's up to you to go down there to your city council, to your planning department, to those meetings, and you stand up and you tell them this is not your plan. We're doing it all over the United States and all over the world because the plan is the same no matter where you are in the world. New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the UK, United States, it's all the same plan. And your book gets into your fight, your own personal fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we sued to stop a huge redevelopment project. And uh, we sued it. Um, I raised about a half million dollars. We, uh, it was a huge project. We stopped it for three years. We did lose, but uh, we went on appeal. We lost again, but we managed to stop that project until the economy collapsed. And they were not able to build all of that smart growth and steal our property tax dollars for 30 to 45 years in my city. And you can do it too. I really encourage people to uh, get my book and, or go on our website, DemocratsAgainstUNAgenda21.com and check it out. Well, the UN has been a focus of our show tonight and it is a many tentacled octopus. Are there mm -hmm. other aspects about the UN that you've discovered from uh, your own research on Agenda 21? Uh, it's, it's global uh, tentacles as far as uh, the, uh, well, earlier we were speaking about the War Powers Resolution and how the UN has pretty much claimed the American military as their own to do their dirty work. Is there anything else in your research that you've discovered about the UN? that's outside of Agenda 21? Well, you know, it's it's almost, it's not what is United Nations Agenda 21, it's what isn't. And you are gonna look long and hard to find something that isn't because this is a global plan and it's implemented locally, but it is a plan for inventory and control of all aspects of the world, all aspects of land, water, and, and human and human plants, animals, everything, everything that you impact and that impacts you is being monitored, controlled, and inventory. So when you see, for instance, in your town, uh, a regional meeting, or when you see a bike boulevard, or when you see that your um, uh, neighborhood association is not going to let you run for neighborhood president unless you've been vetted by the board first. Amazingly enough, this is all United Nations Agenda 21, sustainable development and it's in your universities, it's in your uh, planning departments, it's all over your government, and that's why you have to get sharp at identifying it, because it's not called Agenda 21. And in fact, the American Planning Association has published documents, and they had a communications boot camp for planners to teach them how to deal with us, because we are waking up and getting active. And this is worldwide. People are recognizing that UN Agenda 21 comes under many different names and that you have to you know, get sharp and identify it and fight it where you are. Fight it locally. Well, I'm sure we have plenty of Delphi meetings going on here in Austin. We've got plenty of growth, of smart growth going on in uh, the center of our town. How would somebody like me go about uh, infiltrating? Let's say I have other members here, and of course there's going to be one person who's going to represent the Delphi technique. Do I go in there and uh, it, it, would it be a good strategy to go in there and just openly say, I am here, I'm against you, I know this is Agenda 21, or is there another technique that uh, our listeners could use? Well, uh, you know, I, I believe it's a big tent and there's room for everybody, and however you get to it is great. But in my book, I do describe how to anti-Delphi a meeting. And these are very tightly regulated meetings where the facilitator has been trained in the Delphi technique. And basically, they don't allow dissent. That's the most important thing to know about communitarianism. It gives the illusion of buy-in by the community. But there's no allowing for dissent. And that's you. You are the dissenters. You're the resistance. So when you go into those meetings, I've got this in the back of my book. There's 20 pages on what you can do in this book. So um, when you go to the back of the book, 
it's in there. It says uh, basically what you do, go into the meeting with your group, however many people you have. You've met in advance. You know, you understand the purpose of the meeting and why you are there. It may be a regional plan meeting, whatever. You go in there. You don't identify yourself with your real name. You don't identify your the people you're with. You never acknowledge that you are together. You don't speak to each other. While you're in that meeting, you are there to stop that meeting and to reveal that it is not your idea. It's not your plan. So there's a way to do it. You go in. You uh, There's a series of, uh, of questions that you ask. There's a way to reveal that it is not uh, your plan. You... Uh, you uh, move into that meeting and you sit with all all of the different at the different tables or you sit around that auditorium you don't um, you don't identify yourself as being with the group that you're with and you ask questions you say excuse me but it doesn't look to me like this plan is something that uh, we got a ch that we have a chance to really have an impression on why is it that your timeline shows the adoption of this plan even though you're saying that I have some input? Is there any way to stop this plan? That's a fabulous question to ask because it completely stops the, the, uh, the entire meeting right there. When you say, is there anything that we can do to stop this plan? Because the truth is there is not. And so you're told that you, the way you live now is business as usual and that that's no good, that you have to take a planned future that that's the choice that you're supposed to pick. And if you want clean air and water and you want jobs, then you're gonna have to go along to get along with their plan. So I show you how to stop those meetings, how to reveal that they are not your plan. And mainly what you're doing, you're not waking up the facilitator. They're never gonna move. They're not gonna change their minds. It's the audience that you're reaching, your fellow citizens. That's who you're talking to. Yep, and there's plenty of us there's plenty of us. It's true. Uh, there's over 300 million of us, and there's only a few of them. So in closing, Rosen, I, I want to thank you again for joining us. Is Thanks. there anything uh, that you want to add to uh, the future of uh, Agenda 21? What, what can we see in the next, well, by the end of 2012? Is there anything that you can forecast uh, that we may be uh, seeing here very soon? Well, what I'm really hoping to see is a worldwide movement of people just like ourselves who are going to get up and say, absolutely not. We will not stand for this. This is not the way free people live. We will not be delified. We will not be moved like this. We will not go along to get along. These are, we will shut this down. We will speak out together. We will stop it. If we don't do it, you have an opportunity now. There's a window of opportunity now. We need to work together. It's not a left-right thing. Don't be misled by that. It's not Republican, Democrat, or left-right. Join together. Fight this together. This is something we can win, but we have to speak out, and we must get active, all of us, right now, together. Well, thank you, Rosa, for your fight for liberty, and uh, thanks for joining us again, and we will talk to you very soon. Thank you. All right, folks, that's going to do it for the nightly news. Again, we want to thank Rosa Corey for joining us and tending to those brush fires in the minds of many men and women in this country. This book is available at Infowars.com, at the store at Infowars.com. Pick one up, pass it around, pick another one up, pass it around, and... The name of the book is Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21, an excellent read, a quick read, and that's going to do it. Thank you for uh, joining us here on InfoWars Nightly News. I want to thank Alex Jones for being the man that he is and giving me the opportunity tonight to host the news, and we will see you again, Lord willing, on Monday. Have a good evening.